Hello and welcome to Progressive News Analysis. I'm Kavit Hathaway. Some of the mainstream media in the U.S. are reporting it as the U.S. relaxes drone rules in Yemen. In reality, the U.S. has approved a new authority that allows U.S. assassination drones to fire on targets in Yemen even when their identities are not known. It's called signature airstrikes. How could these drones, which have been described as targeted killings, not that they have hit their targets all the time to have resulted in many civilian deaths, now fire at targets whose identities are not known? Well, in this news analysis, we will ask our guests whether this is another way for the U.S. to okay civilian deaths as collateral damage, or whether it's a sign to spread this to other countries in order to keep America in a perpetual state of war. The Obama administration has given the CIA and the U.S. military greater leeway to target what it calls suspected al-Qaeda militants. The new authority includes targeting people whose identities are not known. There's no evidence that uh, al-Qaeda really represents any kind of major threat at this point. Certainly in, in, in Yemen, uh, they do not. And, and it, as a result, this is just a, a way... You know, this is kind of war on terrorism. Uh, it's a way to tell Americans, well, we're protecting you. Um, I don't think that that's what the results are. I think that the results are that uh, Amer the American administration is becoming uh, much more isolated. U.S. officials say the drone strikes on the Yemeni province of Marib this week was among the first attacks carried out under the new authority. The policy marks a significant expansion of the use of unmanned planes in Yemen. Many critics say increased airstrikes will push up the number of civilian casualties, undermine U.S. law, and further destabilize Yemen. The U.S. has stepped up its drone attacks since President Barack Obama took office in 2008. One of the bloodiest attacks in Yemen took place in 2009, when dozens of people, many of them women and children, were killed in the Al-Majala region. Yemen is not the only country targeted by U.S. drones. The unmanned aircraft are also operating in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Somalia. Washington claims the airstrikes target militants. However, they have mostly resulted in civilian casualties. The United Nations has identified the U.S. as the world's number one user of targeted killings, largely due to its drone attacks in Pakistan and Afghanistan. The international community does not know when and where the CIA is authorized to kill the criteria for individuals who may be killed, how it ensures killings are legal, and what follow-up there is when civilians are illegally killed. In a situation in which there is no disclosure of who has been killed, for what reason, and whether innocent civilians have died, the legal principle of international accountability is, by definition, comprehensively violated. Well, let's find out if we can get an answer regarding the use of drones by the United States. Let me introduce our guest. Uh, we have uh, from Code Pink activist Ty Berry joining us from Washington. American philosopher and political commentator James Fetzer joins us from Madison. And a senior editor at Veterans Today, Gordon Duff, joins us on the phone from Ohio. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, James Fetzer. Uh, perhaps you can clarify this for us. Uh, first, let's look at the line from the U.S. on this. The U.S. will now be allowed to target individuals found to be plotting to attack the U.S. or American territory overseas, even if U.S. intelligence cannot identify the people by name. How do you explain the rationale behind this? Well, the whole situation is completely outrageous. It used to be a principle of uh, American moral and political philosophy that it's better to let 10 guilty men go free than for one innocent person to suffer. The whole line about Al-Qaeda is completely fabricated. This was uh, an entity created by the United States to resist the Soviet invasion in Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden is well known to have been our man in the Middle East, where a CIA agent even visited him in Dubai when he was undergoing treatment for dialysis. Uh, studies have shown that use of drones because of the inability to discern precisely who the target is properly costing 140 civilian deaths, innocent deaths for every targeted insurgent, 
It's a disgrace that the United States should be abdicating its responsibility. It represents a grotesque violation of international law and the principles of jurisprudence rooted in the concept of due process. No man should be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the opportunity to defend himself in a court of law. While this is alleged to be a war context, the complete abdication of responsibility here is grotesque and stains the reputation of the United States. Ty Berry, uh, maybe we should uh, do a flashback here. Uh, you may recall when Obama in January said the drone strikes had not inflicted huge civilian casualties. Or when, in fact, as it's been documented, for example, in Pakistan, drone strikes have killed uh, 10 civilians for every militant killed. Some estimates are higher, such as the one James Fetzer said. But uh, looking at just that ratio, which is 10 to 1, wouldn't this signature airstrike increase the number of deaths based on uh, the report card of the success or failure of these uh, assassination drones? Well, that's absolutely a fact. The fact of the matter is the, the, the uh, what a mistake, the Obama administration is trying to get ahead of the press that's going to come out. This weekend in Washington, D.C., we are going to have a, the first international drone summit. It's called by Medea Benjamin, Code Pink, and other groups that are, that are getting together and talking about the issues around these signature strikes that are now becoming prevalent. It's now becoming knowledgeable in, in the American uh, media. For, as a matter of fact, signature strikes have been going on since the beginning of the strikes in uh, Pakistan. As you'll remember, the first strikes in Pakistan, the CIA wouldn't even admit they were, they were drone strikes. They said for years these were uh, fired from uh, American war, war planes. And uh, now, then they came out and said, yes, indeed, we do have drones. And now they're saying, we're now going to start signature strikes, which they've been starting. We have a gentleman here, Shiraz, that came from Pakistan. He's a lawyer. He's putting his life on the line. He was not allowed to have a visa to the United States for 14 months. We finally pressured the State Department to let him in and tell his story to the American public of the countless, the hundreds and hundreds of innocent lives that are lost in Pakistan. For example, in, the nor in, the, uh, in Waziristan, if they pick every man with a beard, well, every man has a beard in, in Waziristan. If they pick a man with a gun, Every man carries a gun. It's, a, it's tribal. That's the way they, they walk around in their area. And then how do they pick who is a terrorist out of these groups? It's, the fact of the matter is, is they're just shooting at anything that they want to shoot at, and then they sort it out later. This is, a, 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 as a matter of fact, a 16-year-old kid was given a camera in Pakistan to go in and document what was going on in Waziristan because no foreign media can get in there. And the, he was killed two days later with a drone strike. And they called him a terrorist. So we're seeing this was, uh, he was given the camera by Reprieve, a well-known br British group that's fighting for the rights of Pakistanis in the tribal areas to resist against these drone strikes by the terrorist uh, group of Obama's CIA. What we're calling for is to take the drones out of the hands of the CIA if at worst, give it to the military so there's some oversight, some transparency, as Obama promised when he was elected. Gordon Duff, in addition, this uh, is going on, these killings by these uh, assassination drones under the nose of the U.N., and also, along with that, that there's no, zero accountability uh, for the U.S. governments. I mean, uh, in some respects, a mockery is being made out of international law. Tell us your comments on that, and also... What is going on when in January Obama finally admits to the use of these drones and then now these signature strikes four months later? Are they preparing the grounds for something that uh, maybe we're unaware of, but they're laying the groundwork for it? Well, two things. Both, both speakers you have here are, uh, are exactly correct. Uh, Pakistan, we hope the new president of Pakistan will be Imran Khan, uh, who will put an end to uh, drone strikes entirely. He's a good friend, and uh, I had negotiated uh, with General Kiani, head of the Army, and uh, Al Jazeera, a 10-day uh, uh, photo trip through uh, Waziristan for the same uh, purpose. And uh, after it was announced, I found myself uh, 
in protective custody uh, uh, outside of Islamabad for some period of time, and uh, quite forced protective custody uh, under circumstances, let's say, other than I approved of. So there is every desire to make sure that no, none of this is seen. The uh, issue that uh, Jim Fetzer had made, there is no such thing as al-Qaeda. There has never been. Osama bin Laden died in 2001. Uh, his CIA handler, uh, Lee Wanta, works for veterans today. Uh, I, he has been entirely debriefed. I have seen in its entirety uh, Osama bin Laden's CIA file. I have read the entire thing. I have it on my computer. Uh, Send the cover sheet at any time, nothing beyond that. I'm a defense contractor. Uh, it's my job. And as far as the game in Yemen, it, this is what it is. The, we're doing these drone strikes here. We're pretending that uh, al-Qaeda is there. In reality, we're interfering in internal politics, and we are assassinating political enemies of our friends in Yemen to maintain power. But that's part of a larger policy where we are migrating an imaginary terror organization over to Africa, where we're soon going to be starting uh, drone attacks. We've been hoping for permission to uh, do these in northern Nigeria against uh, Boko Haram, Niger, Mali, Chad, the CAR. That's where we're moving imaginary al-Qaeda, because we want to fight that war in Africa, in Africa, because we've been fighting it in uh, Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan, and we've been having our tail kicked. So it's better to fight an imaginary war than a real one. And we do so love fighting uh, these wars with a joystick and a drone. Uh, James Fetzer, uh, please expand more about uh, what Gordon Duff is uh is saying there, it sounds like the U.S. has to be somewhat in a perpetual state of war. Uh, I don't quite understand why these signature airstrikes now are being uh, brought into the picture, announced officially, uh, as uh, uh, Gordon Duff talked about different countries that the U.S. is involved in. What is going on? Well, as Gordon Duff astutely observed, Osama bin Laden died on or about 15 December 2001. He was buried in an unmarked grave in Afghanistan in accordance with Islamic tradition. The illusions of politics extend, therefore, to the purported attack on the compound in Pakistan, uh, which was a way of relieving political pressures that were derived from o o Obama not having closed Guantanamo, having stationed troops in Pakistan, and having his birth certificate being subjected to minute scrutiny which was exposing its fraudulent character all of that was taken off the front page by the staged fabricated attack on the compound where no one had ever seen osama bin laden indeed how can you kill a man who died in 2001 another time the idea that he would be buried at sea in accordance with muslim tradition was preposterous uh, that's disrespectful to bodies which can be eaten by fish, sharks, and other crustaceans. It's a shame that the United States has been reduced to one lie after another. We seem to be spending more time trying to defend lies than we are solving real problems in the world. And this is yet one more example. So are they trying to remain in these countries that they're using their drones? Uh, we could add to the list of Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, maybe uh, a setup to becoming in Syria, where drones have uh, been officially documented to fly over their air uh, 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 space. So is that maybe a reason for the U.S. to use these uh, assassination drones? Are you asking me? James well, Fetzer. If you ask me, the continuation James Fetzer, of go ahead. the... It, well, the idea Jim, of the perpetual ahead. war seems to be necessary to keep the military-industrial complex going. Uh, I mean, we, we, we didn't derive the peace dividend that should have occurred when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, uh, but instead we fabricated a phony, elusive, shadowy terrorist 
force to align ourselves against where we could conveniently bring about any action anytime we want, any terrorist event, and we have been complicit. Even the FBI has been shown to have been involved in terrorist activities here in the United States. So we're fabricating events in order to justify massive expenditures and to expand the powers of the police state that the United States has become. Uh, Ty Berry, this uh, use of drone by the U.S. president uh, has increased uh, so much that uh, uh, we can't even exclude your own territory. The United States uh, reported that the FAA, uh, I think uh, up to 80 sites, uh, military sites within the U.S. are going to be using drones. Of course, not for strikes, but for what it's meant to do, which is uh, spying. It seems like the president is using drones as a strategy. Tell us the ins and outs of that. Well, let's get some facts straight. The fact of the matter is, is that right now, the, the, uh, Mr. Shiraz, a lawyer from Islamabad, is going is filed lawsuits against the CIA, naming CIA director in in Pakistan, and this way, the United States is trying to avoid this by claiming that we we are just starting these signature bombings. The other thing is that. Right now, the, the Obama administration has called for a law to, calling the FAA into organizing uh, airspace for 3,000 up to 30,000 uh, drones to be able to be dispersed throughout the United States for use by Homeland Security, police forces, which are biting at the bit to get at this technology. Right now, there's already 200 permits that have been given to we don't know who. The, uh, the, uh, the Obama administration is not being transparent in this by any means. Also in Yemen, the uh, President Saleh was uh, exposed by WikiLeaks, who was willing to take the blame for the killings in his own country by his overlords, the CIA and the Obama administration. Look at the book that Medea Benjamin just wrote, Drones, Killing by Remote Control, and you'll find out a lot of the, the information right now. But what we need to focus on is the fact that we're not going to get rid of these drones. They're going to be here and they're coming to the United States. The, the, the administration is trying to warm the people up to these drones, telling them how good they are and how they're used for forest fires or for helping people in floods and things like this. But the fact of the matter is they start out as surveillance. They told us these drones were only used for surveillance, and suddenly they were able to mount uh, weapons on them. Soon they'll be able to mount, they've already come up with a way to mount non-lethal weapons on them that will be used against uh, us in the Occupy movement and protesting and others in the United States. We need to get ahead of this technology. Right now the technology is taking us for a ride. This is proliferation that we need to get ahead of just like we needed to get ahead of the atomic bomb, but we were unable to, and it's being proliferated around the world. We need to get ahead of the drones. They're already in the hands of 50 countries. The number one producer of drones, the United States. Number two, Israel. Number three, England. Gordon Duff, you had something to say, but before you say that, I'd like to really find out from you. You say that uh, Imran Khan maybe is going to be the next president of Pakistan. Pakistan doesn't like these drones on the surface in the news. They say that. But there's that Bagram Air Base, for example, $1.2 billion tender. Uh, it's said to be these uh, robotic intelligence warfare equipment to include the use of drones. Drones are pretty much here to stay in different parts of the world. Well, I've, uh, I've talked at length uh, with Imran Khan about, uh, about drones. We've, uh, we've certainly uh, uh, sat down together gone over the effect they've had in destabilizing Pakistan, uh, which uh, you know, our other speakers have brought out very, very accurately. The, uh, the fact that drones themselves have caused milli mil we're talking about killing militants. Why are people militant? Because drones have killed their families. Yes, everyone who was there then wears a beard, everyone has a gun, and once you kill their family with a drone, they're going to be militant. And from that day forward in their lives, they're going to kill Americans. What's behind this, what's always behind this, is economics. The issue here, of course, is that we have all of the world's major currencies are in free fall collapse. 
we're having a difficult time collateralizing currencies with hydrocarbons, which uh, Iran is one of the, com- the countries that depends on hydrocarbons. This is why we're moving toward Africa, because we need to be able to collateralize with diamonds. We need to be able to collateralize currencies with rare earths, which is, uh, exist in, let's say, considerably more value and in, go- uh, and in limited amount of gold. But the issues behind all of these games are economics. And, the, of course, why we have Occupy? Because we have a very, a very small number of people in the world who control all of the assets of the world, and the rest of us are being pushed into police, police states. We're to live in slavery. We're to live with, as exactly as your other speaker had said, drones over our heads, threatening us with non-lethal or less than lethal weapons, and uh, the breakdown of society, we're looking at the edge of it because society is going to break down when we are no longer able to run the world on counterfeit currencies. When we come to an end, when we're no longer able to go down and buy gasoline and food, it's all going to come apart. And they need this police state mechanism and these technologies so they can control all of us. Uh, it's we, the people, all of us, all of the people of the world, are a potential enemy, and these technologies exist for nothing other than controlling the people of the world as the enemy of... We can't, we can't even name who we're being enslaved by. We don't right. even know. Right. Let me, let me come to James Fetzer here. James Fetzer, I'm going to go back to the line that the U.S. gave at the beginning of the program. Even if U.S. intelligence cannot identify the people by name, another way of saying collateral damage, civilians are going to be killed. The U.N., when is it going to act on this, given the track record? This represents a gross violation of human rights by any standard, certainly by that of the Declaration of Human Rights, by the U.S. Constitution, by the Declaration of Independence, I was so affected by the story of two young, beautiful teenage girls being followed by a drone who looked back at it and laughed and giggled, which irritated the drone operator, so he took them out. This kind of scenario is being replicated in Iraq and Afghanistan and now, no doubt, even in Pakistan. It's outrageous, it's a corruption, and it's a betrayal of every principle for which the United States is supposed to stand. It must end. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Let me thank our guests from Code Pink. We have uh, activist Ty Barry from Washington. Thank you very much. Uh, American philosopher and political commentator. You just listened to James Fetzer from Madison and senior editor at Veterans Today, Gordon Duff. Thank you. And thank you, the viewer, for watching another edition of the Press TV News Analysis. Send us any questions or comments, suggestions. Newsroom at PressTV.ir. From Yukova Tapley and the entire team, it's goodbye.